creativity is an art that lives in all of us. We make kind memories, that is a must. Memories that will never fade and stay with us. A journey that has no destination. A creative passion has a home. Where we connect, invent, and have fun. And where we can see the world through new lenses. Lights, camera, action. An opportunity that allows me to express myself. The Bullcast has been my second home, a place where I feel seen and heard. To be or not to be. Today's episode on the Bullcast, we are highlighting poetry. So stay tuned for a very poetic and exciting episode tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in and be on the lookout. For these signs are crystal balls. They foresee vintage shops, gourmet vegan hot dogs, gentrified soda pops at 10 bucks a pop. Condos break out on the oily face of a city with more snowbirds than residents. Edged red, pulsing white, they threaten the whole head. Condos poke jagged, plaster and metal scrape the sky. For a lease, oh, I meant uh, for lease, signs in black and white. Piano keys play something sad and regrettable for vacant lots, once memorable spots. For lease signs litter where community now spitters, butters. Leases, rents, ever higher, higher. Tampa Bay Times cringes and shudders. Empty places ripe for pimples. It's simple. If it's empty today, tomorrow a developer will play. Some places stay empty. Too many blacks, am I right? Smiles stay empty. Pay can't keep up. Is this acne a part of growing up? Thank you so much, Denzel, for that wonderful poem. Hello, everyone. My name is Kayla Lehart, and I am one of the executive producers here on the show. Normally, I'm behind the camera, but tonight I'm going to be interviewing my good friend Denzel Johnson Green, who is a local poet here and is keeping the literary arts community alive here in St. Petersburg. Thank you, Denzel, for joining us. So, Denzel, you were actually a student here, correct? Yep, yep, um, back around 2013. Cool, and what did you study? Oh, at first it was anthropology. Um, my sister said I would like that. Um, I like it a lot now, but I was kind of like just feeling it out back then. And then I was a bio major after that for, for a while. <laughs> cool, and um, what made you become interested in poetry? Oh, geez, I was working a dishwashing job um, and I was just, I was just like, just done every night. And I was listening to like a lot of like, like lectures, like podcasts, and um, I was just like, I guess looking for something more, you know, and wanting to know about the universe and all that. Um, and so I found an open mic thing randomly uh, through the Studio 620, and I was like, well, shoot, I'll, I'll, I'll go check that out. So I brought my friend uh, who also went here, and. I was like, all right. So we just sat in the back and just, yeah, you know, I brought my camera because, uh, you know, I was like, I want to take pictures. And uh, it was amazing. It was like, it was like people were out there just like wearing superhero capes. You know, they were just out there just kind of like saving the day with, with poetry. And they're just, I wanted the ability, I guess, to say things that I really felt, you know, which I guess I didn't say a whole lot growing up. And when did you start going to those events? Uh, 20, November 2017, <laughs> I remember because it was so, uh, I guess, I don't know, it was so big to me, you know, so it was like November, the last Wednesday of the month, uh, 2017. And you started working there, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, uh, Maureen, who heads Keep St. Pete Lit, um, she was like, yo, you looking for a job? And I was like, yes, please, <laughs> like, get me out of this dishwashing job. And, uh, I got a job, uh, within the month. And uh, my first event was on Kwanzaa in December, and it was, it was cool. Bob put me on. It was, uh, it was beautiful. And you mentioned Keep St. Pete Lit. So for the open mics, uh, they do the hosting there. How mm -hmm. long have you been doing that? Um, oh boy, I'm not, I can't remember how long Keep St. Pete Lit's been doing it. 
maybe since 2015. I'm not. I'm not too sure. Um, but I, I was helping out with them um, for a while, and um, I just I never missed an open mic. You know, I was always over there helping out, cleaning glasses. You know, wine glasses at the end of the night. You know, uh, working the bar. Um, you know, if Maureen was doing something, I would just kind of hop in and host. Like it was, it was a cool time. It was crazy. A lot of spilled wine, a lot of hard hugs. It was cool. And uh, for the audience members, can you tell who uh, what Keep St. Pila is? Yeah, so Keep St. Pila is a local literary nonprofit. Uh, they help bring like writing classes to like kids uh, in nearby schools. Uh, they also do adult classes uh, like Memorian. Um, in other places, um, they do like poets gym, writers gym. Um, I think they just started a memoir, um, like a memoir club. Uh, they have a book club. So yeah, if you like anything literary or you know words, if you like books, if you like the smell of pages and all that, you know it's a cool place to kind of like connect with people. And um, you can check out their events online. At, I'm pretty sure it's keepsaintpeelit.org. And are you a still board member on there? Yep. Yep, still a board member. Um, I help out when I can. Usually help, like uh, just an event or something, hold, hold it down. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy. It's a lot of fun. And where are they located? Um, I'm not sure. If, I don't think they have a no. There's no brick and mortar. Um, they just kind of like show up at like a spot, um, and then their writing classes are just like at wherever the event is located. So it could be like at the Morian, could be at the Studio 620, could be at um, one of the local like elementary or middle schools. Um, so, yeah, it, it looks like a lot of places. It looks probably like the community. Now, I heard that they are also around in the fairgrounds. Is that true? Um, oh, actually, yeah, wait a second. <laughs> they have an office there. Um, yeah, at the factory St. Pete. Yeah, wait a second, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I guess that's where it's based. Shoot, I guess that's where it's based out of. But uh, also, that's where the open mic is held, too. So on the second Saturday art walk, there's that one, and then there's one at the Studio 620 every last Wednesday of the month. Um, so yeah, they're they're spread out, and they're just you find you find us anywhere, you know. And are these events free for people to join, or or do you have to pay? They're usually low, like five bucks. Um, poets gym, writers gym. I can't remember how much those cost. Those might be like a little bit more, like ten or fifteen. Um, but the open mic is always five bucks, um, and then the one for the kids, it's free. You know, it's gonna be like in the classroom after school or something. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and I saw something where like you're out and about on bikes and you're walking around. Is that with the friends of Jack Kerouac? Yeah, so that's friends of Jack Kerouac. Um, that is the bike tour. That's we've got another one happening soon. Um, and yeah, I mean James will just take us out and then just talk about like these different spots and be like, "Yo, Jack Kerouac came here and partied," or you know, like. Oh, well, you know, Jack Kerouac, you know, oh, well, he lived over here. Um, and then at some of the events, we have poets, like, speak um, to the place, either inspired by Jack Kerouac or by the place. So um, last year, we did it for, like, Haslam's. Um, we did it also again this year with Hannah Newton. She's a local poet. So, yeah, I mean, just we just go to these spots, and, like, whatever inspires us, just bam, ba-dam, ba-dam, just comes out. And for those who don't know who Jack Kerouac is, can you explain who he, who, who he was? Yeah. So Jack Kerouac was uh, this awesome poet from Lowell, um, which is up in, dear God, Massachusetts? Oh, God, that's, that's wrong. It's totally wrong. Um, but he was just like this young guy that, oh, man, he just felt, I guess, like all like the miseries, but also like the intense joys of the world. And so maybe a psychologist would probably see him now and be like, all right, he's got bipolar disorder. But back then he was just like, he just felt a lot of highs and lows. So he just like went, he traveled so much around the country, just writing poems he wrote, you know, on the road, Mexico City Blues, um, and just capturing the sick, nasty, under the refrigerator griminess of life, but also like the intense um, like impulses of life and these things that just, uh, you just wanna, these urges. And so he captured all of that. Unfortunately, he lived so freaking passionately, you know, he was, uh, he became alcoholic, um, he was very shy, and um, he just didn't know how to release things healthily. Um, so he died here in Florida um, in St. Anthony's Hospital, so right around the corner. But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, he was great friends with Allen Ginsberg. Uh, he coined the term beat poets, or like beat, like what is it to be beat, to be like so weary? Um, a lot of like, just like older poets from the 50s, you know, like he was hanging out with all of them, you know, and they were just doing wild stuff, like on, like wild, like robbing, like what's it called, like carjacking, I don't know, some crazy taking drugs, like, I don't know, man. They were just on some other, you know, <laughs> crazy. Why do you think that um, St. Pete uh, does a dedication to him and created this non nonprofit organization? Yeah. Um, so I came in it kind of late. Um, James Hartzell's been heading it for a long time. Um, he's uh, pretty sure treasurer now. Um, and, I mean, he always says that, like, you know, Jack spent some time here and his mother actually moved out here. And so he he got to know Florida a little bit. It was like one of his like escapist places. Um, and so he, I think their family had like a house in Orlando as well. Um, and so they spent some time there and they would go up to like in the Northeast again and they would come down here again. And it was just like, I guess Florida and St. Pete in particular is just one of those places where he never put down roots, you know, but it's, I guess a place where he would tumble. Like if he's a tumbleweed, he would just come here and meander and tumble a while and then go somewhere else. Um, but I, I don't know. That's St. Pete's is one of those places that people want you know want to come visit and kick their legs out at the beach. You know, hold a beer or something, relax. Um, Florida may be very escapist in nature. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and what other events do you take part in? Boy, uh, I guess just this Keep St. Pete Lit stuff, it's Friends Jack Kerouac stuff. Um, I host a weekly open mic at Black Crow Coffee um, called Community Poetry. And we just, you know, hang out, um, read poems, we do prompts, um, all sorts of crazy goodness. Um, and I don't know, I, I just float around, you know, I'm kind of a hermit, but <laughs> hole up at home. <laughs> Can ask anybody, where's Denzel? Oh, he's, he's home. And um, for the Black Crow community, uh, what when is it exactly? Yeah, so that's every Sunday, uh, 3 to 5 o'clock. And the first hour, we're just uh, working on prompts. So, like, I'll be like, hey, let's write a poem about your perspective of being a dog for a day or an elephant, you know. And so for, a, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we'll just hang out and we'll just, you know, write these poems. I'll put on some lo-fi hip-hop and then we'll just do our thing and... Um, then we share, and, uh, and we hear some wild stuff, you know, just from anything you could think of, the um, the exciting, the silly, the sad, the shivering, the ooh, the, the oh, the thoughtful. Um, yeah, we hear it all. And then at the end, we do an open mic. So that's like uh, any poems that you've been working on or that someone else has written. So you could read some, like, Elizabeth Bishop, some... Um, some Ogden Nash, some modern poets, some, some whatever. You know, it doesn't have to be your stuff. I think there's a lot of pressure to keep creating as, as a creative, so I'm going to take that pressure off. And how many people go to these events? Oh, I started with a few, but um, typically I get like 20-ish people. Uh, tw yeah, about 20-ish these days. Um, but, you know, it fluctuates and comes and it goes, you know. <laughs> and being a part of these events, how has your experience with the literary arts community shaped you as a person and your poetry? I tell people I was a, um, for like the Myers-Briggs test, I was a INTJ like five years ago, and then I started writing poetry. Wait, it's 2023. 20, Look at that. Okay, more than five years ago. Uh, you know, I was like INTJ. Now I'm an INFP, and so there's like... And it's made me more sensitive. It's made me a little bit more doughy, which I appreciate. Um, and so the the analyzing sometimes takes a back seat now. And I'm trying to just like, I'm trying to, I don't know, I'm trying to just feel things through. And then also respect um, that not everyone's super, you know, analytical and, you know, kind of linear. It, it's important for us to just, take things in and have times to process um, 
And that's that's a skill I didn't realize I had or realize I wanted, but it's it's so important. Time to like think and like recollect about like how someone made us feel um, and how we make others feel. So it's it's de being in the poetry community has definitely rounded me out um, and taught me a lot of people skills. Cause working with so many people, seeing so many people every week. Oh my goodness, it's it's a lot, um, but it makes you hopefully more in tune with people. And I think I've kind of come like that. And you're also doing the Neptune Magazine. Oh, yeah. Also, because you read it from there. I just wanted to like briefly, because we're running out of time, uh, talk about Neptune Magazine just real quick. Yeah, so Neptune, uh, I put it out seasonally. Started in, during the pandemic in 2020. Um, it's fun, it's zany, it's wacky. Um, I put it out, Black Crow, uh, it's five bucks. Um, I don't ask for much, I'm just like, listen, this is it's printing costs, you know. And uh, it's anyone can submit, you know, it's free to submit. You can go to the Instagram, um, Neptune Poetry Mag, uh, yeah, on Instagram. <laughs> and last but not least, real quick, why do you think poetry is important to the people in the community? Ugh, jeez, what a question. Oh boy, that's a belter. Uh, uh, why is poetry, I'm always asking, why is poetry important? I, I don't know. I, I I honestly don't know why poetry is, is always important. It's, um, I, I've, I don't really have like a hallmark, kind of warm feeling for that, or like a saying. I didn't like poetry like growing up, up until like really like five years ago, I just really didn't like poetry. It felt too, too sticky, too, too many emotions, too sad, too depressing. Um, but what people you need and what I need, and we need something to like, just remember why we're human and to bind us. Whether it's in laughter, I love funny poetry. I, I think people, everybody needs funny poetry, some Shel Silverstein. Um, but whether it's sadness or you know fun or in anger or, or whatever, you know, get it out and then share it with people and make sure it's relatable. People need relatable. Well, thank you for joining us tonight, yeah. Denzel. And if you guys are interested into these events, we have it all the information in the description box below. Uh, we're going to head it off to the next host and guest. Thank you. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone. It's your co-host, Nathan Poinsett. And today, we have a special guest today, Mr. Frank. Would you like to introduce yourself to the people? Certainly. Hey, Nathan. Frank Biafora. I uh, have been around USF St. Petersburg since 2007, and I was Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences for about 10 years, and uh, recently went back to the faculty. Now I'm a full professor of sociology in the Department of Sociology here at USF. Okay, welcome. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, how do you like the sociology? Sociology is amazing. Um, I uh, cut my teeth on sociology. First, uh, found my passion when I was a high school student up in Gainesville, and then I rolled into sociology as an undergrad, master's, PhD, and I've never looked back since. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I heard about, there's like a poetry contest happening soon. Like, do you know anything about that? I heard about that too, Nathan. So, yeah, so the poetry contest. Um, we uh, decided, a few people at USF St. Petersburg thought that it was time that we had a poem that truly represented the essence of USF St. Petersburg. And, um, and so I talked with the chancellor about that. She thought it was a good idea, and we set forth, and over the past month, we put one together. Okay. Okay. So what, what is behind this poetry contest, poetry contest exactly? Like, how many participants are going to be there? Is there going to be a type of judging? Like, who can, who can be involved? Sure. So the, the, the contest, it just concluded. Let's show that. Um, uh, there were, um, we talked about who should be involved, and we decided it was going to be a student competition. Okay. And so we wanted uh, a poem from the students to represent the students and their experiences of being a USF student here at USF St. Petersburg. Um, and so we put together a flyer, a, a few students um, and I, and uh, we sent it out and distributed it widely throughout the campus. And uh, the entries came in, and then the judges made their final decision actually just yesterday. Really interesting. So was there a specific type of poem you were looking for? Poetry is one of those things that you don't know what you're going to get, right? And when we set forth the, um, the guidelines, 
We wanted to be as vague as possible, but within some parameters. We wanted you to be an undergraduate student at the university. We wanted you to be able to reflect and think about what USF represented to you as an individual. Uh, what makes USF St. Petersburg special within the USF family of the three institutions within the university? Um, and then we wanted it to be organic, right? We, we wanted it to come from the heart, from the soul. Yeah. Uh, didn't want it to be too long because people don't want to read too much perhaps. And so we said we limited it to about 25 lines. 25 lines. Okay. And uh, we, that's what we set out. And um, we also, upon entry, we said that uh, what we would like is a text copy of the poem. But more importantly, we wanted to hear the poem in the words of the student themselves. And so we asked the students to submit an MP4 as well. And so the judges were able to read the poem and then hear the poem in the context um, with which the student uh, wrote it. Okay, wow. So how many entries did you receive exactly? We had a total of five entries. And I have to tell you, it was hard narrowing that down mm -hmm. to the, 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 the winner. Um, and we decided as a committee that uh, we wanted to have first place, second place, and a third place um, students uh, as well. So uh, there, were, there were five entries and uh, the, I was not one of the judges but I can tell you that uh, the final uh, three were stellar. They were all really really good but the final three were stellar and we're going to be able to share that uh, this coming weekend. Exciting. So what prizes are being offered exactly to the winners? I was hoping there would be a financial prize. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing you'll quickly learn when you're around a uh, an university um, is that you cannot just offer a cash prize or a financial prize. You can offer gifts, and so the institution can provide a gift. So we're right now sorting out what the appropriate gift would be um, and for the first, second, and third place winners. Uh, but I can guarantee it won't be a cash prize, but it'll have some cash value to it. Okay, yeah. I mean, if you were to attach a, attach a prize tag to it, I might have signed up <laughs> myself, you know? Okay, so besides the 25 line requirement, what other criteria are you looking for? Or were they looking for exactly with these poems? We were left that one wide open. Okay. Again, once they met the parameters that they were a student, they were a registered student at the university, that they met the 25 uh, line limit, uh, we pretty much allowed the students to, to write their own poem in their own style. We didn't want to manage or massage that at all because we really believed that the creative spirit was going to emerge and uh, students were going to come at this from very different angles, uh, which they did. And so every poem was so vastly different from the other. Interesting, interesting. And I have to ask, do you have a favorite poet? I have or a not couple really. of favorite poets, and it's changed over the years, I have to tell you. Um, so when I was a high school student and learning about Abraham Lincoln, and, and I, I read the poem by Walt Whitman, uh, Oh Captain, My Captain, and that really was the, one of the first poems that really resonated with me at that moment. Um, and then as a, as a young man growing up listening to rock and roll music, I was always thinking to myself, isn't music poetry? And in some ways it is. Yeah. And so Bob Dylan was always one of my favorite artists. And, but he was always being pigeonholed as a singer-songwriter until a couple of years ago when the Nobel Prize reached out to him for literature. And so Bob Dylan is now a poet. Literature. And so yes, what? yes indeed. And so I, I would put Bob Dylan in the category of uh, one of my favorites. And lastly, there's a, uh, a poem and a poet that I recite uh, fairly frequently. Uh, Martin Niemöller, um, mm -hmm. who wrote a poem about the World War II experience. And so I would say that I have a, f a few favorite poets. Wow. Well, thank you so much. You shared awesome information with me. Thank you for telling me about your favorite poet. Um, and we'll catch you guys in the next segment. Good evening, everyone. It's your host, Courtney Brown. And today we're joined here with the president of the Poetry Club, Adriana Lopez. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. No problem. And um, describe to me, what is your position at the Poetry Club? Yeah, so I'm the president of the Poetry Club. So I basically just um, organize the workshops, uh, make sure everything's um, running as it should, and welcome new people coming in they are interested. And what does a meeting at the Poetry Club look like for a new member? Yeah, so we have weekly workshops. I usually prepare about two to three prompts. Um, I allot some time for us to write and then we share our writing. It's usually just a way for us to stretch that writing muscle um, and we come and share what we want. We don't have to share, but 
<laughs> however we want. <laughs> for the Poetry Club, is the um, club only exclusive to the medium of poetry or what other mediums are? Um, so we pretty much welcome anything. Um, it's Poetry Club, so our main medium is poetry, but we do short stories. We had songwriters come on. I even had people that like um, talk about some of like, their plays that they're trying to write. So it's really, as long as you have some sort of written form, we would love to have you. Yeah, and speaking of like forms to perform, what kind of events do you guys hold? Uh, we do open mics, um, so we usually try to have them around some sort of holiday. So we had a Halloween open mic last fall, and then we've had Valentine's Day open mics in the past. Um, so we also have done them actually around uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, that, that, that kind of thing. So that's kind of our outside workshop uh, big event that we do. Gotcha. And um, I hear that you guys are hosting another event for um, poetry. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, so we're planning to do um, an event towards the end of this month. Um, and then we're actually also planning like an April, um, kind of like spring themed one in, in April. Um, those are our main ones coming up right now. We're also like collaborating on a couple of other projects, but that remains to be seen, <laughs> so. <laughs> and for those um, events, are those also, or are they exclusive to poetry? Um, what kind of also, um, forms can they perform at open mics? Uh, you can perform anything, and even um, like if you have your own equipment, like if you want to bring up your guitar or something like that, you can. But um, the USC, which is where we host a lot of our events, um, they also have some equipment that I can request. So if there's something special that um, someone wants to do, if they talk to me, we can try to accommodate that as well. And speaking of participants of the events, is this um, event only exclusive to USF students? Can off-campus um, patrons come? How um, does that event look like? So we do um, mainly cater to USF SP students um, and USF Tampa students and other USF system students. Um, but I have had uh, people like ask um, from the community, like, hey, could I um, participate in this? Or could I uh, maybe come in to like watch some of your workshops? So we're really open to anything. It just depends on like how we're going to see that happen, how we work that out. Okay. I was just going to ask, um, what does poetry mean to you? Um, to me, poetry is the way I see the world. Um, I'm uh, closed off um, in some regards and like express myself. So when I take pen to paper is my way of like letting those feelings out. It's also a way of like stress relief, anxiety relief. Um, whenever I um, have trouble understanding something, I write in a poem. That's beautiful. And speaking of how you view poetry, um, what kind of themes do you see um, talked about in the club meetings? I know that poetry is a very vulnerable medium, so what kind of themes do you guys speak on? Um, we usually, since we have prompts that kind of serves to guide us, um, but there have been times where like, I put up a prompt where it's like, write about a happy sunny day and someone is like, oh, a stormy day. Um, but that's totally fine. I think the nice thing about um, the way we structure our meetings is that you can really do whatever you want. Um, like I've had that happen to me too, where I'm writing for a prompt and it's completely different from what I was expecting. So it's really whatever you're feeling at the time. And how can students who are interested in the Poetry Club participate? Um, just reach out. Um, you can email me. My contact information is on our Boss Connect. Um, if you don't have time for the workshops, that's totally fine. We have an open door policy, so you can come over to our open mic. So if you see me on campus and you have an idea, you can tell me. <laughs> I'm pretty open that way. And so um, for students who aren't um, necessarily open to like the commitment of like a meeting, um, is is it still like available for them to only participate in open mics? Yeah, for sure. And even I've had uh, people that are like, oh yeah, there's this thing happening downtown. Do you think you can like announce it in your email? I'm like, yeah, for sure. Let me just put that in there. Like it's, it's, it's everyone's club. It's not just like one way to do it, so. Okay. And is there anything else that you would like to add about the Poetry Club or anybody who would want to get involved or thinking about it? Um, yeah, so um, again, we welcome everybody. We have meetings Tuesdays from 5, five to 6. Um, I also want to say we do post our prompts on our uh, Boss Connect site. So if someone wants to like be involved but like Nancy can't make the meetings, you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Adriana, for being here today. Thank you so much. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. All right, and we're going to pull it back to our host at the studio. 
This is an ode to the poets and to the ones a black crow. I had forgotten that feeling of what it's like to be vulnerable with others, to stand up and speak what's on your mind, to share a glimpse of your soul written down on lined paper, to listen and be heard by thirsty poets who bleed in their spaces. I had forgotten that feeling of intimacy flowing through a room full of people who crave deep inspiration and aren't afraid to weep out of their closets or stay in it. Poets, you are the dreamers and shakers who storm through the inner stagnations and offer freedom to be seen and heard. True speakers, you have shown me reflections of the scribed words that was etched in the stained glass of my memories. You have shown me who I am, who I once was, and who I am now becoming. Thank you for spreading your wings and showing me that it's okay to spread mine. Thank you, poets, for being you and reminding me of this feeling once more. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's your host, Nathan, and I'm here with... Audrey. And in this segment, we're going to be reading our own poetry. So I hope you all are ready. Um, don't make fun of me too much. I wrote this in high school. Click, 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 whoosh. A phoenix light flamed appeared in the author's brain. His pencil danced across the paper as if it was a dazzling show dancer. The days go by like an animation, a play, scene by scene, line by line. The writer finds himself engulfed in the surrealness of the story he birthed out of a few minuscule thoughts. Cooking with gas, his word became a blaze of a fiery red that was blinding to see. My work is complete, he said to himself. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was great, Nathan. That was yeah, a very I'm, great I'm, poem. I might get back into writing poetry, but I haven't wrote in so long, but yeah. I wanted to share it with you all. Hope you guys like that. All right, well now I have a poem that I would like to share that I wrote back in sophomore year of college, so a few years back. It's called Wonderlust in My World. I wonder what life would be like without tracing back the past. No memories, no faith, no photographs, no love, no inspiration, no music, not even stories. They say to enjoy the present because it only happens once. The wonderless I feel of the wind guides me to a new phase. Clouds above, ground beneath, I hold on tight to the string of life awaiting on what this world has for me. In an open sky, an ocean each day, I am alive. It is a wanderlust with a gleam and a wish. Nice. So thank you all, Volcast viewers, for tuning in this evening to our poetry episode. We will have spring break next week, so conveniently, everyone, students, enjoy your spring break next week. And tune in on March 20th, our next episode at 5 p.m. for Woman Empowerment as month of March is Woman History Month. So tune in next week, for following week for that, and go Bulls!